Hello, I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about using acceleration in your Arduino sketches to add some color to the motions and movements of whatever it is you might be doing. So you might have a uh, like 10 LEDs lined up. That's the example we're going to use tonight. And you might want uh, them to blink, say, from right to left. And, you know, it's easy enough to get them to blink at a constant rate. But what if you wanted to see a little bit of acceleration? So maybe they they slowly start to blink and then speed up towards the end or vice versa. They quickly jump off the off the line and then slow down. So that's we're going to look at, at that type of acceleration. And then, you know, other applications of acceleration, some obvious ones are if you're using a servo and you want a quick movement, you know, to slow down and you want to kind of smooth some of those movements out to make them look more natural, more realistic. In fact, the reason that I'm doing this video is because one of the gentlemen in the course, uh, he does, he builds Christmas villages, which are like miniature animatronic models. And uh, he's interested in using uh, acceleration and, and stuff like that to make the animations look more lifelike. So that's kind of what we're after. So we are going to talk about three relatively easy ways to use acceleration in an Arduino sketch. Uh, the first one is going to be constant linear acceleration. The other is going to be exponential acceleration. And then finally we're going to mess around with the square root function just to show another way of, of adding a little flavor to, to some variables. So let's go ahead and jump right in. For this tutorial, if you'd like to follow along, you'll need 10 light emitting diodes, 10 220 ohm resistors, you're going to need one jumper wire, you'll need your Arduino board, I use the Arduino Uno and that's what I would recommend, and you'll also need a breadboard. Uh, finally, you're going to need a Sharpie marker. To set up the circuit, it's relatively simple. You're going to start at pin number two on the Arduino, and you're going to place a 220 ohm resistor in that pin. And then the other end of that 220 ohm resistor, simply connect it to one of the rails on your breadboard, one of the inner rails. And then from that resistor, you're going to take the long leg of your LED, you're going to connect it to that resistor, and then you're going to put the short end of the LED in one of the long legs on the breadboard. So one of the red or blue generally is the color. What you do next then is just go to pin number three, put the next resistor in pin number three, attach that to the breadboard on a different line, and then attach the long leg of the LED there, and then the short leg in the, in the same rail. So what we're going to use is a common ground for those LEDs. And then you just continue doing that from pin two all the way down to pin 11, and that will give you 10 LEDs. And then finally what you need to do is take a jumper wire and connect it from ground on the Arduino to that common ground rail that we've been using on the breadboard. And that's it. You can go ahead and plug your Arduino in. So here we are in the Arduino IDE. And what I'm going to do is go to File, Examples, Control, Arrays. I'm going to use this array sketch as the base sketch to modify in order to demonstrate these three different types of acceleration that we're going to be using. Just for ease of use sake, we can say thank you to Dave and thank you to Tom for making this, this sketch, but uh, for right now, and they've got a great tutorial on Arduino, but we're just going to just get rid of all these comments right now just to give us more space. So let's just quickly talk about how this sketch works, and we're going to have to make some slight modifications. So the first, the first uh, thing we come to at the top are the variables, and we have a timer variable. This adjusts a delay time between blanks and then we have an array and what this array does is it specifies a bunch of different pin numbers so we're gonna set this up so it matches our layout so we're using pins 2 through pins 11 so let's go ahead and change that so we have our array changed again this is LEDs pins 2 through 11 and then pin count is simply the number of pins we're using and we're using 10 pins okay let's go ahead and save that Okay, now that we have it saved, let's go ahead and upload this to the board and take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so what this sketch does, as you can see, is that it lights the LED from left to right. So it lights one LED, moves to the next one, lights it, and then uh, back and forth along the row. It's pretty neat. Um, but you know, one thing about this is it moves, that LED moves at a constant speed. And what we're going to try to do is demonstrate ways to make it move so that it moves slowly and then fast and then or it moves fast and then slowly so we'll look at a couple ways to do that so 
um, that's pretty much it up here. We're not going to have to mess around too much up, too much more up here. But let's come down to void setup. Here we can see they're using a for loop to set the mode of the pins as outputs. And you know, on a quick aside, if you're not familiar with arrays or if you're not familiar with for loops, it's no big deal. You can still probably follow along okay in this video. But I welcome you to go to the open source hardware group website and sign up for the free uh, Arduino course for absolute beginners. It is a 13 course module that can uh, get you up to speed on all this stuff. Okay, so here we are in void setup and what I would like to do is set up serial communication. So I'm going to use the begin function from the serial library. Okay, now let's come down to the loop. How does this thing actually work? So here is void loop and here is a for loop. The conditions inside the for loop it initializes this pin, it sets it equal to zero, then it says this pin less than pin count, and if you recall, pin count was 10, and then it iterates this pin, so it just adds one every time through the loop. So what happens when we get inside this code? Well, it does a digital write, and it turns an LED on. Which LED does it turn on? It turns on the LED in the LED pins array that this pin is indexing. So if this pin is zero, which would be the case the first time through the loop, then LED pins of 0, which would be pin 2, would turn on. And then we delay for a specified time, timer, and then we do a digital write. So again, we're indexing this LED pins array with this pin. The first time through the loop, it's going to be 0, and we would turn the LED off. So this timer variable right here is what controls the on-off time. And what we're going to do throughout this tutorial is find ways to adjust this, dynamically adjust that timer variable, throughout the sketch so that it, it shows acceleration and or deceleration. And down here at the bottom, this next for loop, so this for loop takes the LED from the right side to the left side, at least the way we have it set up, and then down here this just does it in reverse. Notice it's pin count minus one. So this just takes it from the left to the right, does the same thing. So these are pretty much mirror loops. They just go in opposite directions. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the first type of acceleration. So the first type of acceleration we're going to talk about is linear acceleration. And so what that means is that the speed is getting faster and faster and faster at a fixed rate. So if you were to think of like a line on a graph, like an x or a y x-axis graph, it would just be a line, um, and in this case it's going to be going from the top left down to the bottom right. So it's going to have a slope to it, you know, if maybe you remember rise over run, that type of thing. To start off demonstrating this, what we're going to do is set timer to 1000. So that is one second, 1,000 milliseconds. And then what we're going to do is simply decrement the timer variable every time through the loop. So how do we do that? So all I've done is I've taken timer, and then I've set it equal to itself minus 100. So the first time through the loop, we, you know, we just set timer as 1,000. So the delay between the LEDs is going to be one second. And then we're going to subtract. Uh, 100 from 1000 because timer is 1000 so 1000 minus 100 is equal to 900. So the next time through the loop how long do we delay? Well we're going to delay 900 milliseconds and then so that would be 900 equal 900 minus 800 which is going to leave us with uh, rather 100 that would leave us with 800 and then the next time through the loop we're going to delay 800 and then we'll delay 700, 600 all the way down to 100 milliseconds. So you can see the delay is going to get less and less and less as we continue across the LEDs from right to left. Now what I need to do before uh, adjusting this other for loop down here, because all I'm going to do is take take this code right here, and I'm going to add it to this other for loop, so it should do the same thing to the other for loop, but what I need to do is reset that timer to a thousand so that we can have that same uh, acceleration here. So I'll just do that. And then I need to do it again at the end of the sketch. All right, let's go ahead and upload that. Okay, so now if you look at the board, you can see as the LED goes from right to left, it gets faster, faster, faster until it gets to that last LED. It's sort of, you know, it's not extremely noticeable, but you can definitely tell that it accelerates as it gets towards the, as the close. And that's linear acceleration. So you can see that's a really easy way to add uh, one form of acceleration to your sketch. Let's look at another way. So the next type of acceleration we're going to talk to is exponential acceleration. So before with linear acceleration, every time the for loop iterated, the delay time got smaller. And it got smaller by a set amount. Well now what we want to do is every time the for loop iterates, 
we still want the timer variable to change, but we want that change amount to start, the, the, the amount of change to be small at the beginning, but then to increasingly get bigger, 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 bigger. And then we're going to reverse it. it. It'll start out really big, and then it will get smaller, 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 faster. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to use a really handy function. It's called the power function. So here we are in the void loop, and this is the top. This is the first for loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to adjust the timer variable up here. I'm going to say timer is equal to POW, that stands for, stands for power, and power takes two parameters. The first parameter is the base. So I'm going to put the number two in there, and that's just rather arbitrary for our purposes. It just ends up being a good amount of time. And then I'm going to put in a variable, and I'm actually going to put in this pin. So this pin is the variable that's used to count the iterations for the for loop. So we know that this pin is going to increment every time we go through the loop. All right, so what, is, what does this mean? Well, all this does, it says 2 to the this pin power. So if this pin is 0, it would be 2 to the 0. What's 2 to the 0? Well, it happens to be 1. Any number to the 0th power is 1. So then the next time, so that would be the first time through the loop because this pin is 0. And if, if timer is 1, then this delay is going to be really quick, isn't it? And then the next time through the loop, this pin would be iterated, right? So now this pin would be 1. So now what's 2 to the first power? Well, that would be 2. Delay is only going to be 2 milliseconds. Man, that's quick. So it's going to be on and then back off in 2 milliseconds. And then we're going to go back through the loop again. So you can see this is off to a really quick start. I mean, that LED is on and off, on and off, the first two. Now, the third time through the loop, this pin will be 2. So 2 to the second power, that would be 4. So now timer's still only 4 milliseconds. Man, does this thing ever speed up? Well, it does in fact speed up. It ex exponentially speeds up because when this pin becomes 9, um, it, uh, it takes much more time to get through. So we're going to rush through all these LEDs and then slowly we're going to start adding delay time. But you know what will be fun? Why don't we take a look? I'm just going to add some code so that we can print the serial monitor. So I'm just going to cut and paste some code in here. Okay, so all this code does is it's just going to print this pin because, you know, I'm curious every time we go through the loop, I want to see what this pin is. And then it's going to give us the value of timer and it will display it nicely. So let's go ahead and take this code right here and put it inside this other for loop. Okay, again, that for loop down there is the same, same deal, just in reverse order. Okay, and then we can, we don't need to reset the timer this time, so let's go ahead and get rid of that and we can get rid of that comment it out all right so let's uh, upload this so now you can see its behavior now when the LED is going from the right to the left you can see that it quickly goes and then it starts to slow down and when it goes from left to right it slowly starts and then it speeds up again all right well why why is it doing this well that's pretty straightforward let's think about this pin so here this pin is zero and this pin gets incremented. So this pin's always getting bigger, 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 which means timer would also get uh, bigger, 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 which would increase the delay time. So the delay is really short, and then it gets bigger. Now, on the other for loop, though, we start this pin at pin count minus 1. So pin count was 10, the number of LEDs we're using, minus 1. So this would be 9. So in, And then we decrement this pin. So here, timer is equal to 2 to the 9th. So timer starts out big, and then it gets smaller, 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 smaller. So that's why we see the behavior in the, in the LEDs this way while they're doing that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the serial monitor. Okay, so here we are, and we can see when the LED is going from right to left, that's this back line, we can see when this pin is 0, then timer is equal to 1. When this pin is 1, timer is equal to 2, you know, when it's 2, it's 3, so forth, so on. And you can see this gradual climb, and then all of a sudden, it gets to 63, now it's jumping to 127, 255, and then 511. So it, it maxes out at 511, but you can see it, it rapidly, exponentially climbs, and uh, that's, you know, what this power function allows us to do. And then the vice is true uh, with the other side of that loop. You can see that um, it starts out large, and then it uh, slowly declines and then bam it's it's uh, a rapid decline here okay well that's using uh, the exponential function 
All right, so the last thing we're going to demonstrate is using the square root function. And this gives kind of a neat behavior. It's definitely a form of acceleration. Um, and, you know, I keep saying form of acceleration. It's just acceleration, just using it in different ways, I suppose, or different uh, rates of change. So the first thing we're going to do for this is we're going to make timer up at the top. We're going to make it 10,000. So that would be 10 seconds. And then down in this loop at the very top, I'm going to say timer is equal to the square root, and that's SQRT is the function, of timer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of timer, so the square root of 10,000, and we're going to delay for about that amount of time. We're going to go through the loop, and when we get back, we're going to take the square root of that previous square root. So timer would have been the square root of 10,000. Now we're going to take the square root of whatever that was, and then we're going to continue through. So you can see that timer is going to become very small very quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that, paste it in down here, and then I need to, let's see, we need to reset timer, so we need to make that 10,000, and then down here we also need to reset timer and make that 10,000. So let's go ahead and upload this and look at the behavior. Okay, so now you can see the way the LED is going back and forth really quick is actually pretty darn cool if you ask me. I like that a lot. So there you have it. Hopefully that was three relatively easy ways to kind of add a little more flavor to the movement, to the delay, to the fade, whatever it is you might be using with your Arduino. Again, so it's just the linear, you know, you're just decrementing whatever variable it is uh, on a consistent basis, you know, 100 every iteration or 100 every time through the loop or whatever. Then there's the exponential acceleration. That's where you're just using the exponential function and it's getting exponentially larger over time or you're using the square root function and you know doing something very similar to the exponential all right well hey that's it i hope this was helpful have a great day bye la, 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 la.